Now, just to give a bit of a refresher on our research topic, imagine we have the surface of the Earth down here. Um, and with the sun, of course, shining down on it, whether it's because of water or rocks or grass on the surface of the Earth, we expect the Earth to both absorb some of the rays of light and reflect some of it back into space. Now, of course, with the depletion of the ozone layer, we expect the Earth to get a lot warmer. And one effect of that that you may have heard of is that um, we're going to see a greater frequency of hurricanes because warmer water has more energy that fuels storms. Um, and so if we represent these hurricanes with just little swirls here, excuse my drawings, because um, the increase of cloud cover that's associated with hurricanes, um, and clouds obviously reflect a lot of light, we expect the Earth, because of these hurricanes, to actually reflect more light than usual, which should slow down global warming to some small degree. However, what our recent paper found was actually the exact opposite of what we expected from the abstract. Uh, we measured a significant, or climatologically significant, um, decline in global albedo over some collection of data. Um, and this decline in global albedo basically means that the Earth isn't reflecting more light, it's actually absorbing more light, which again contradicts what we expect from the model that we just laid out. And if you want to read more about this, there's some pretty cool press coverage that I got. If you just Google something along the lines of the Earth is dimming. And so this is where our research comes in, where we're pretty much trying to quantify how hurricane activity has a correlation with, or what we expect, um, to increase the amount of sunlight that Earth reflects, or its solar reflectance, also called its albedo. Now, the second one, this albedo, we're going to measure this through some phenomena called Earth shine, where basically if we have the sun over here, Earth over here, the moon over here, get that a little bigger. Um, the way that we could pretty much measure the amount of sunlight that uh, Earth reflects is we pretty much take the sunlight that's coming off of Earth. Now, we have the dark side of the moon. Most of the time, uh, the obviously the bright side of the moon is illuminated by sunlight from the sun. Um, but the dark side, what we could actually do if we point our telescopes at it, is that we could look at the amount of sunlight that Earth reflects onto here, and by seeing how bright the dark side of the moon is, it's not all that bright, but just by looking at the very small amount of luminescence uh, we observe on it, we can measure the amount of sunlight that Earth is reflecting. Um, now, we won't be dealing with that right now. We'll be dealing more with hurricane activity in this video. Uh, basically, it's a lot simpler. Again, we have the surface of the Earth, and we have a lot of hurricanes and stuff. There's some um, satellites uh, funded by taxpayers that pretty much take pictures of the Earth and uh, kind of upload that data online for uh, the public to access. Now, unfortunately, there is no easy data RS website that gives you all the files you need. It's not gonna tell you on this day at this time, there was this amount of cloud cover in this region. Um, you can't just really Google satellite cloud data and immediately find what you're looking for, uh, which is why I'm making this video, basically just to walk you through that process of ordering and downloading the data, specifically the cloud cover over some period of a hurricane that we're going to need for this research. So a lot of this information is going to be available on the Hurricane Data Research Doc, which is in the team drive I've shared with you all. If you don't have access to it, then you can just um, pause and take a look at the stock as I scroll through it. But uh, basically, you could also prefer the stock because I put a lot more background information, more granular about what the data actually is and the motivations behind why we're using certain things. Um, but basically, just to walk you through that process, um, we're going to go to the NOAA, or we just Google NOAA class, open the very first link. And this is the website that stores and distributes and allows the public to access the data that we're looking for. So first thing you want to do is make an account on here. There should be register up here. I'm already logged in. Um, and what you're going to go here is over is open the drop down menu. Um, and the product we're searching for is the GOES satellite. Um, there are three over here. The GOES R series is 2017 and onwards. But for our purposes, we're looking for the period from 2000 to 2015. Uh, so we are going to look at the sounder block, or the GOES sounder, which kind of gives you a vertical slice of the atmosphere. 
um, and open this again mod the motivations behind why we're using the sounder as opposed to the imager a lot of stuff is on the stock and so after we open the sounder page and or after we select the sounder and press go we're presented with a lot of input parameters um, I specify a lot of these on the dock. Um, first of all, we're presented with spatial. This isn't as important. I already filled some of it out right here. You could just input these numbers right here. Um, for the temporal or the time range that we're looking for, um, we're starting in this video, I'll just give the example of Hurricane Sandy. So you could just go on Wikipedia or some search engine and look at the formed and dissipated dates of the hurricane. This Hurricane Sandy went from October 22nd of 2012 to November 2nd of 2012. We want to go about plus or minus seven days before and afterwards. Um, so for our time range, oops, we just want to go, of course, October 15th, 2012 to November 9th, 2012, seven days in the past and seven days after the hurricane formed and dissipated. Start and end time we could leave as is. We want to select the entire range of days, of course. Um, and our research is particularly focusing on this little region in the northern Atlantic, so we want to select this, and this will give us um, a pretty clean region from which we could choose. We don't have to fiddle much with the spatial data. And in terms of the actual satellite we want, uh, there have been many GOES satellites. Um, because we're not in the GOES R series, this only goes up to the GOES 15. Um, if you want to select to know which GOES satellite to use, you can pretty much just go on the GOES Wikipedia page, scroll down here, and it gives um, a status and launch date and sometimes decommission date of each one of the satellites. You'll see here that the GOES 13 captures pretty much what we want, that period of 2012. Um, but always be a little careful, click on these and see if there were any periods of failure within the satellites. Um, in this case, uh, in the anomalies page on September 2012, like right before Hurricane Sandy, um, there were some errors and it was decommissioned for a bit, but it returned right before the beginning of Sandy. So we could still use the data. We might lose some stuff, of course, because our range starts on the 15th. It was returned um, to, it was made active again on the 18th, so we might lose some data at the beginning there, but we still input that and see what we get. So, of course, we select GOES 13, and from here, we can search for our data products. So from here, um, this is just one page. Up here, you could see the, um, we have about 90 hits for those input parameters. Um, for each of these, you could click on the view details and you could get some information, although this isn't as helpful. Um, and all of these are the GOES-13 covering the North Atlantic region. It'll tell you the exact start and end time of when the data was collected. And given that it's 90 hits, which is under the data limit of 100, we could just select all of these and add all of them to our cart. Nice. Um, this is 10, by the way. You want to select 1 through 90, and then that should be our 89. Should be exactly what we're looking for. Not bad. Anyways, we have our 89 uh, data sets that we're looking for. Um, this email up here, this should be associated with the account that you logged in with. Um, we're looking for the data in the net CDF format, 16 bits per pixel. And the band, this um, is where it takes a little more research as well. Um, there's this doc that I'll link in the description and should be shared with you guys. It's on the hurricane data research document as well. Um, on page 60, it kind of tells you the wavelength associated with each of the 19 bands on the early GOES satellites. Note that these do not line up with the GOES R satellites. However, if you want to kind of interpret what each of these wavelengths mean, um, because these aren't very great descriptions of what the the meteorological objective isn't a great description of what's actually measuring. You could kind of go on the GOES R website and associate each of these wave, not the band number, but the actual wavelength that it's emitting and collecting with um, 
the bands on the ghost are. And you notice that this has less bands, of course, because it doesn't map one to one onto the early ghost satellites. And you can kind of see, click on each one of these, open the animation loop, scroll down, and take a look at what it represents. Here's a short blur, but there's a longer um, information guide. Those are also located on this link, again, in the description on the doc. Um, on each one of these, you could open it. And there's a short two-page doc for each one of these, kind of describing what it measures, uh, what some of the data looks like, the purposes, the limitations. But anyways, for the purposes of this order, we'll be ordering from band 2. Sorry, not band 2, band 19, which is the visible one. It should give us a top-down view of the clouds as seen from space. So we're looking for cloud 19. Don't want a map overlay, so again, we want um, that CDF format. 16 bits per pixel, 19 bands, um, and then this should carry forward to all the rest of the data products. Um, and from here, we can place our order. You'll get a little confirmation number. You should get an email confirming your order. And from there, it will take around one to three hours, depending on how big it could take way longer. Uh, and you should get an email, not with the actual data files, but instructions on how to download those. And I'll resume when I get those. And so at this point, we received an email saying that the processing of our order is complete. So it has our order confirmation number, the size of the order. Um, and although these are highlighted in blue like their links, if you click on them, they don't actually lead anywhere. Um, this is just uh, something weird that happens over Gmail if you're using that. Um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a download link here where you could go through and click on each file individually and download them. But um, we're not scrubs like that. Um, we're gonna use a, we're gonna be using a method called file transfer protocol or FTP to download these files that lets you download a ton of files um, in bulk very quickly as opposed to going through and clicking on each one individually, which gets very, very difficult, especially when you're dealing with this is 90 files, but eventually we're gonna be dealing with the entire years. And keep in mind that this is only about a like three, four weeks worth of time, less actually. So to go back to that word I said, uh, file transfer protocol, and you see it here too, FTP. Um, to kind of simplify what that means, um, there are lots of transfer protocols that two computers can use to transfer information. A very popular one is HTTPS, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which Hypertext pretty much is, is the type of code or files that make up a website. Sorry, not files, just the stuff that makes up a web page. And so HTTPS will allow different computers to transfer website information to each other. Uh, as the name suggests, FTP, or File Transfer Protocol, allows two computers to connect to the same server and basically go through a directory of files and download them. So basically the way that we do this is we open our command prompt and we enter each one of these individually minus the comment. And that'll, you can copy paste this right in, but it's better to type it in case something gets messed up. So the way that we basically do that is we are going to just on our desktop press Windows key and R. We're gonna type in CMD, which is stands for our command prompt, and open that up. And we're greeted with this. Um, this looks scary if this is your first time seeing it, but uh, the instructions are pretty straightforward. First thing, we're just gonna establish um, a connection and log into the class system. So we're gonna do FTP, FTP dot. Um, avl.noaa.gov, and all of this should be on the email. Um, sorry, I typed that in there, ftp.avl.class.noaa.gov. Sorry, let me exit out of this. Let's restart. Establish an FTP connection with ftp.avl.class.noaa.gov, and there we go. Uh, once you see this message, we should get confirmation. At this point, you're logging in. Uh, your username should just be anonymous, and then your password. Now, when you type something, nothing is going to come up, but it is still being entered. It's just a, a security measure. You could just type user at internet, um, and here you are logged in. Um, and the app, by the way, is the shift two.
uh, one word. So first you want to change the transfer mode to binary, just type in binary right here. Um, change directory, which is CD, and then the number that they give you in the email. So mine is 81495281. And it says, you, okay, we're in the right directory. And at this point, we just want to copy all the get commands um, in the email, come in here, and control V, paste it all in. Control access, and it'll just one by one download each one of these files onto your computer. Um, this might take a while, sometimes if the data order is very very big this could take a couple of could take up to an hour sometimes too depending on your connection speed but um if you pause for a second and screenshot this you should see that these are successful and done in some amount of time and you just want to give this some time to go through all of them now this isn't going to show up in your downloads folder like um like most other downloads where it's actually going to go by default is um I'm going to go into your, this PC, your OS, whichever one you're currently using, users, your name, and then they should all be coming here, um, and they're updating in real time. Uh, once you're done at this point, you just want to select, or once it's done downloading, you just want to select all of these and copy them into whatever folder you want. Um, but yeah, you just want to, before you do that first, of course you want to let it finish. Uh, at the end, it's gonna, for some reason, it doesn't download the last one, you just want to press enter. And at that point, you will have downloaded all the files. This is a fairly small order. Um, at that point, you could just press buy, or quit, and this number should line up with the number in the email. Uh, for, yep. Um, and at this point, you're done downloading everything. Uh, like I said, you just press Windows E. Open that, this PC, oops, OS1, users your name, whichever one you're on, these are all the files that you want. And you have successfully downloaded files from the GOES satellites from the NOAA class system. That's all. Thanks for watching.